Over at Marvel Comics, it's been fascinating to watch the publisher enter a new era of Blade, starting with the Bloodline Daughter of Blade miniseries, in which readers were introduced over to Brielle Brooks. But today, Marvel is finally making good on some of their teases over with the Blade property with a full ongoing series from the character. My name is Arako Braddock, and today... Let's go ahead and take a look at the brand new Blade number one from Marvel Comics. But before we get deeper into the video, I want to go ahead and encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button if you enjoy our content. Marvel's slickest vampire hunter returns in a brand new ongoing by Brian Hill and Elena Casagrande. True evil is patient and a dark ancient power has been simmering quietly for centuries. And when Blade himself is the one to unknowingly unleash it, Marvel's entire supernatural underworld will come out of hiding to demand he handle it or pay a pound of flesh for his mistakes. Bloodbaths, blackmail, and Blade. You won't want to miss the explosive first issue of this new volume. And Blade number one is written over from Brian Hill, featuring art from Elena Casagrande, colors from Jordi Belair, Letters from VC's Joe Sabino, and we have a cover coming in directly from Elena Casagrande and Jordi Belair. Really appreciate uh, the kind of expression that Blade is mounting over on this cover and that sense of kind of symmetry that this cover offers with the two swords and interesting stance uh, that Blade has taken over on this cover as well. And I want to extend a quick thank you over to Adventures in Poor Taste. Uh, for posting our preview of Blade Number 1 so quick. And I want to take just a few moments to talk about some of the artwork in the issue coming in directly from Elena Casagrande. Casagrande's work in the issue inspires so much intrigue and fascinating emotions throughout the tale. I really think that Jordi Belair's color set plays so nicely in terms of Casagrande's artwork, especially with how she frames uh, some of these panels in particular. I always like to focus on how some of these artists structure pages, but in terms of Casagrande's art, I think the positioning of the kind of panel placement really brings out a lot of emotion in some of these series as well. And I really like how Jordi Belair brings out these kind of blue hues to tease out uh, the red image in the car kind of driving away over in this sequence. The artwork in Blade really takes on this interesting kind of anime and manga influence, but also brings out a more kind of regal element in superhero comics in this page that we have up on the screen where Blade kind of makes his debut over in the chapter. Also loving the sense of symmetry from the panel and how flashy the kind of first appearance of the character is throughout the issue. There's some great action sequences juxtaposing the kind of sense of blue and red that the issue pays off visually throughout the chapter here. And there's also just a beautiful, beautiful page that it looks like Marvel didn't get the chance to include in this preview of the series where one of the characters, Dana, is actually at a bar and ends up spilling the drink. And the reflection of the drink, Dana sees some of the vampiric characters over in this nightclub that she's looking at. And it's one of the most arresting kind of visual pages I've seen in a long time and just further cements how fantastic uh, some of the really beautiful artwork is throughout this Blade chapter. As the series goes on, the book takes on a bit of a darker tone. And in the final couple pages, I do think Casa Grande did a good job uh, shifting the tone over in terms of Brian Hill's script throughout the issue. I want to switch gears a little bit, talk about Brian Hill's writing for this new Blade chapter. So at first, I was fascinated by this kind of relationship uh, that we see Eric embark on in trying to save this character of Dana. Learning about some of Dana's tragic past in the issue definitely got me intrigued over with this character dynamic. But I have to say here that this issue of Blade started to let me down towards the kind of end of the issue when they started to introduce more of the plot mechanics over behind the series. I think the status quo that Brian Hill set up initially for the series was actually a good one. And while I appreciate the fact that he uses this to introduce one of the villains over in the series, I think that moving forward with that status quo would have made this issue read a lot more cohesively. I feel like most 
of this chapter reads like a just kind of standard Blade story, reintroducing readers to the character. But then in the final five or six pages, we're introduced to a new villain, and the status quo for Blade shifts drastically here. So it'll really fall on the second issue to flesh out and expand the status quo of Blade and this other character and to make this whole series read a lot more coherent. In terms of this debut issue, I, I don't actually think from a scripting perspective that we have the inciting incident of the miniseries fleshed out in a way that's clear because I feel like the next issue could just knock it down and reset the status quo with some kind of supernatural underpinning here. So at the end of the day here, I am definitely a little bit mixed over on this Blade series, and I hope future installments of the story really focus in on the current status quo with Eric and Ralpha. Well, I want to know from you, what are some of your thoughts over on this new Blade series? Did you enjoy this comic book as much as me? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for coming to check out our coverage over on this new Blade title. And we'll be back to cover the latest and greatest Marvel comics. Thanks so much, and I'll see you soon.